Hey guys, today we are going to be reviewing linear relationships. So this is just anything to do with a line. And remember you have a TI, virtual TI 84 that you'll have on your star test and you will have this Desmos graphing calculator and both of those will graph anything that is in Y equals form. So a lot of these answers can be checked by graphing on the calculator and looking at the graph or the table. So the first part of a linear relationship is the slope or rate of change of that line. And here's a few ways that slope can be found. You can do slope formula, or you can do rise over run on a graph. And in an equation, remember the slope is the coefficient of x in y equals mx plus b. So let's practice finding slope from a few things. So between these ordered pairs, I will use slope formula to find the slope between them. So I'm going to label x1, y1, and x2 and y2, and now I will just do y2 minus y1, so 8 minus negative 1, all over x2 minus x1, so 3 minus negative 4, which 8 minus negative 1 is the same thing as 8 plus 1 or 9, and 3 minus negative 4 is the same thing as 3 plus 4 or 7. So the slope between these points is 9 over 7. Okay, then this one says, what is the slope of the line represented by 7x minus 12y equals 36? So I'm going to convert this equation to slope-intercept form so I can easily tell the slope. So the first thing I need to do is subtract 7x from both sides, and I get negative 12y equals negative 7x plus 36. And then I'm going to divide everything by negative 12, and I get y equals 7 over 12, would, negative 7 over negative 12 would simplify to positive 7 over 12 x and then 36 divided by negative 12 is negative 3. So the question was asking for the slope and that's the coefficient of x in this y equals equation. So our slope would be 7 twelfths. Okay, then this says draw an example of an undefined and zero slope. So let's start with undefined. That would be a vertical line that has no horizontal change to it. And then a zero slope is a horizontal line that is going to have no vertical change to it. So this would be like zero over a number in fraction form because zero divided by anything is zero. And this would be like a number divided by zero because you can't divide by zero, so that's why it's undefined. If you're unsure, you can check in your calculator. If you do zero divided by a number, it's going to tell you zero. If you try to divide by zero, it's going to tell you undefined. Okay, then we also learned about three forms of linear equations. So slope-intercept form, you should have learned about that in your pre-algebra class and been dealing with that for a couple of years now. It's y equals mx plus b. And then in algebra one, we added point-slope form, which is called point-slope form because we have a point, x1, y1, and our slope, m. Be careful with this formula because x1 and y1 have opposite signs in the formula as they do in the actual point. And then we have standard form, ax plus by equals c. And remember in standard form, a has to be a positive whole number. Okay, let's take a look at this first one. It says write an equation in all three forms of a line that goes through negative two, negative four, and seven, negative 20. So the first thing we need to be able to write any linear equation is the slope of the line. So let's start by finding the slope between these points with slope formula. For y2 minus y1, I would do negative 20 minus negative 4 all over 7 minus negative 2. Negative 20 minus negative 4 is negative 16. And ne 7 minus negative 2 is 9. So the slope is negative 16 over 9, because that does not simplify any further. Now I'm going to write this equation in point-slope form. You can use either point. I'm going to use this first point. 
So that means in point slope form, x1 will be negative 2 and y1 will be negative 4. And remember in point slope form, I have minus y1 and minus x1, which means I'm going to take the opposite signs as what I see here. So it would be like a minus negative 4 or plus 4 is what I'll put in my equation. So point slope form will be y minus negative 4 is going to change into plus 4 equals, I found the slope, that was negative 16 over 9 times x minus negative 2 is going to change into x plus 2. So there is point slope form. Now I need to convert this to slope intercept form. To convert to slope intercept form, we are going to isolate y. So the first thing I need to do is distribute that negative 16 over 9. And I get y plus 4 equals negative 16 over 9x. And then negative 16 over 9 times 2 would be minus 32 over 9. And the last thing I need to do to get y by itself is add 4. So, or no, I'm sorry, I need to undo the plus 4, so I'm going to subtract 4. And for slope intercept form, I get y equals negative 16 over 9x, and then negative 32 ninths minus 4 would be negative 68 over 9. And then my last step, so there is slope intercept form. Now I need to convert this to standard form. So standard form, I want to get x and y on the same side, and then I will multiply to get x, the coefficient of x to be a positive whole number if I need. So the first thing I'm going to do to convert this to standard form is I'm going to move this x term to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to add 16 over 9x to both sides. And I get 16 over 9x plus y equals negative 68 over 9. And the last thing I need to do to convert that to standard form is make a a positive whole number. It's already positive. I'm just going to make it a whole number by multiplying by that denominator of 9. And I get 16x plus 9y equals negative 68 after I distribute out that 9. Okay, so I cannot check or I cannot graph all of these forms on Desmos, but I can graph the slope intercept form since it's in y equals form. So I'm going to graph that just to make sure that it has the two points that the original problem asked for. So negative 16 over 9 x minus 68 over 9. So you can scroll through this picture and try to find those two points or you can just set up the table and I'm looking for the point negative 2, negative 4 which I see there and I'm also checking to see if it has the point 7, negative 20 which it does. So I know at least the slope intercept form is correct there. All right let's look at this next one. It says the table shows a linear relationship between x and y. So we're going to find the rate of change and then we're going to write the three different forms of the linear equation. So let's start by finding the slope of the table. I'm going to use the last two points. You can use any two points. I just see less negatives there. And it would be negative 5 minus 2 all over 10 minus 0, which is negative 7 over positive 10. So there is my slope. Now I need to write the equation in point slope form. I'm just going to use the last point to write it in point slope form. You can use any point from the table. 
it's just what I want to do. So it's going to be y plus 5 since the y value is negative 5 equals the slope was negative 7 over 10 times x. And the x value was positive 10, so I'll put minus 10 in my equation. So now I need to write it in slope-intercept form. I could convert this point slope form to slope-intercept form, but they gave me a gift in this table. They gave me the y-intercept, which is where the x value is 0, and I know the y-intercept is 2. And I already found the slope with slope formula. It was negative 7 tenths. So now I can write it in slope-intercept form. It would be y equals negative 7 tenths x plus 2. And that last step is to convert this to standard form. So the first thing I'm going to do is move the x term to the left side with the y term. And I get 7 tenths x plus y equals 2, and the last step to convert to standard form is make sure a is a positive whole number, so I'm going to multiply everything by 10, and I get 7x plus 10y equals 20 for the standard form. Okay, next thing we're going to look at is some key features of linear graphs. So remember the x-intercept is also called a zero. That's where the graph crosses the x-axis or the x value when y is zero. So on this graph right here, the zero or x-intercept would be six since that is where the graph is intersecting the x-axis. And the y-intercept is also called the initial value. This is where the graph crosses the y-axis or when x equals 0, which on this graph would be right there at 84. So let's talk about what those mean in the context of this problem. It says the graph shows the linear relationship between y, the ounces of ice cream in a carton remaining, and x, the number of ice cream cones made. So 84 is the amount that they start with in a carton. So that is the starting number of ounces. And then if you notice, six are zero or x intercept is where the y value or the number of ounces is zero. So they can make six ice cream cones with those 84 ounces in a carton. Okay, next thing it's asking for is the rate of change of the graph. So first of all, I see that it is negative. And it almost looks like there's a perfect point right here, but that pattern does not continue. So that means I cannot use this as a perfect point. The next perfect point I see is not until the x-intercept. So I'm going to have to make a large slope triangle here. And I need to be careful about what I'm counting by here on the y-axis because it's counting by 12s. Um, we can see that the change is going to be 84 though because it's from 0 to 84. That's the vertical change and then the horizontal change is from 0 to 6, so 6. So my slope is going to be negative 84 divided by 6, which let's see what that simplifies to. That would be negative 14 for my rate of change. So then I have both things I need to write my equation in slope-intercept form. I have the slope. We just found it. It was negative 14. And B, my y-intercept or initial value is 84. So my equation in slope-intercept form is y equals negative 14x plus 84. And then I just have one more step to convert that equation to standard form. And it's just one step here, add the 14x, and then a is a positive whole number. So there's my standard form equation, 14x plus y equals 84. All right, last type of linear relationship we're gonna talk about is direct variation. So if a relationship is called directly, uh, ver if it's direct variation or if it's proportional, it'll say directly proportional or varies directly. That just means that you can set up a proportion 
because it works with this form y equals kx. There's no b value, so that's why a proportion works. So let's look at this first one. It says the value of y is directly proportional. That means I can set up a proportion to the value of x. When x equals 368, y equals 92, what is the value of y when x equals 52? So since it told us it was directly proportional, we can just set up a proportion of y over x equals y over x. So I'll do 92 over 368 equals, I don't know what y is, when x is 52. And there's lots of different ways to solve proportions. I am going to cross multiply here and set up an equation. 92 times 52 is 4,784. And 368 times y is 368y. So then I would divide by 368. And 4,784 divided by 368 is 13. So that means that the value of y in this directly proportional relationship is 13. All right, last one says the total distance in centimeters a toy car moves varies directly. So that means I can set up a proportion with the time in seconds. The toy car moves a total distance of 312 centimeters in 12 seconds. What is the time in seconds the toy car moves when the total distance is 494 centimeters? So I'm going to set up a ratio with this first. 312 centimeters in 12 seconds. And then it tells me it moves 494 centimeters and we want to know how many seconds is that? So there's lots of different ways to solve a proportion. I'm gonna cross multiply here and set up an equation. So 12 times 494 is 5,928. And then 312 times X is just 312 X. And then we would divide by 312 to figure out the value of x. So 5,928 divided by 312 is 19. So that means it would move 494 centimeters in 19 seconds.